Eskimo sideline. Jason Moss and Ricky Ray in constant communication down there after every series. On the other sideline, a very different Terry situation Joseph between Terry Joseph and Michael Bishop. Uh, the two have barely said a word to each other all night long. And after each series, Joseph comes off and has a chat with the offensive coordinator, but very little interaction on one sideline. Well, there you can see Jason Moss and Ricky Ray. Now, obviously, different situations. Ray and Moss are really good friends off the field, and everybody knows about the tension happening on the Argo sideline, but still it seems that a working relationship is somewhat strained. And as you can see, Kerry Joseph back in, second and three on the roll, throws the completion to Satut, so, you know, and that's, that's a great point by Ryan, and, and one that the quarterback that's playing in the game needs the extra set of eyes. I mean, this is something that has to be resolved for the Toronto Argonauts to move forward, without question. I mean, you cannot go to the sideline and not get help from the backup quarterback and say, here's what I saw. You know, and that's, these guys have to start learning how to work together. There's down near midfield. Joseph has time, looks deep, and just overthrows and draws a flag. Andre Talbot. And Shannon Garrett in coverage. Garrett's having a tough third quarter. You know, Garrett's timing may have just been off slightly. He went over the top to try and knock this ball down, and I think he was a split second ahead of it. It, did, it wasn't, didn't look like any pushing going on. Take, take a look again. Andre Talbot, inside move. Okay, so he makes Shannon Garrett do a speed turn. A little tiny grab there. That's nothing. Uh, you know, again, I think because pass interference is such a huge penalty because the ball is placed where the uh, infraction occurs, you have to be certain that was too close. And it turns out to be a 24-yard penalty. Joseph now looking for the end zone. Incomplete. Marlon Proops has a couple of touchdowns in this game. You know, we've talked all game long about how these two are trying to work on their chemistry, but you get to a point also where you can start to force it to a player, and that clearly was a well-covered route by Arlan Bruce in that corner, and it looked like Kerry Joseph just locked into him and was going to him no matter what. And Kerry Joseph said that yesterday, so we've, we've got to get to number five, but we can't force it to number five. He's got it to Arlen Bruce tonight for a pair of scores, but now looks at second and 10 from the Edmonton 24. Five receivers are out. Here comes the rush over the middle incomplete. Boy, and I think, and I, again, I, I'm not so sure that Arlen Bruce didn't slip or, or hesitate going across the middle because, again, that's where Joseph was looking. He was, his receiver, Arlan Bruce, was nowhere to be seen. I think he kind of slipped across the middle. So Mike Vanderjat will come on. And he will size up a 32-yard field goal attempt. And Vanderjat puts it through. And after Edmonton scored 14 straight in the third quarter, Toronto has answered with 10. Yeah, I was going to say that even though you could see that offense, Kerry Joseph moved the ball a little bit and had some problems down in this area, but in the scoring area, but they did respond. I mean, those two big plays, an interception for a touchdown, one of the biggest plays in football other than a blocked punt. And then a punt return for a touchdown can bury a team can demoralize a team, but the Argos have fought back. Bishop for a couple of series. Kerry Joseph back for that last series for a field goal. Well, for every sack in tonight's game, Purolator donates the quarterback's weight in food to a local food bank, Purolator, where business is going. And just one sack for Edmonton to report tonight. We'll see Cam Wake tomorrow. Mm. And he had a big game last week. Four yeah. sacks, yep. Leads the league again. Well, there was some criticism after week one for the BC Lion defensive line, and Cameron Wake's uh, uh, enough of that. Kelly Campbell on the return. And he's pulled down at the 33-yard line. Richard Siegler 
makes a special teams tackle. And Ricky Ray, who's had a quiet third quarter, back onto the field with just over two minutes left. Boy, the last four games against these two, when these two teams played, it's been Toronto winning all four. You mentioned off the top, Chris, and through those four games, Danny Machocha's squad has always had better stats. Throwing the ball for more yards. And had the time of possession stops, but they haven't won. That's picked off. Orlando Steinauer has the interception. A big turnover here as Steinauer records his 49th career interception. And the momentum has shifted dramatically back in Toronto's favor.